Hey guys, Ivan here. So in this video, we have a couple of interesting bodybuilding updates, but we're gonna start with this one, with Ian Valier's physique update. And it's not really much of a physique update, really. It's more like a mirror selfie. But it's always interesting to talk about Ian because people either hate him or love him. I am a fan of Ian Valier, as you guys probably know, of his physique, of his personality as well. He is very outspoken, very controversial, but other than that, his physique is also the kind of physique that people either love or hate. Because he has certain strengths, and those strengths are really strong, and he has some weaknesses, and those weaknesses are really bad, like uh, his calves. Whenever I make a video about Ian, everybody keeps talking about his calves. Uh, unfortunately for those guys, you cannot see them in this, in this uh, photo, you can't comment on that, but what you can uh, hate him on is his triceps. A lot of people are saying that Ian has no triceps, as uh, Patrick Tour says here in the comments, jokingly, because Patrick is obviously... Ian's coach. Now, here in this physique update, let's check his physique out. Basically, he's shredded, right? I mean, he's very, very lean. For two weeks out, he's spot on. I wouldn't say he's much leaner than he was a week before. His conditioning was pretty much ready at three weeks out, actually one week ago. He was 269, so based on his prediction that he's gonna be in the low 260s, he had to lose like 6, maybe 7 pounds, and that's mainly water weight, maybe like a pound of fat, if that much. Uh, so here in this side tricep, he looked amazing, but what people disliked about this physique update of his were, of course, his calves, uh, or the lack of them, and also the lack of a horseshoe, uh, which is uh, the definition in the triceps. And I get that, I mean, here is Lee Priest, his triceps were phenomenal. Just like Lee, Phil Heath was also known for his arms, especially his triceps, and they looked phenomenal, a horseshoe was amazing, especially when he was younger, when he wasn't too big to hit this pose properly. And here is what Ian Valier looks like inside tricep. Now, he, I'm sure he's struggling at 270 to grab his hands behind his head and to, and to fit in this pose, but he's somehow doing it. I'm pretty sure he's holding his thumb. I don't think he's able to hold his hands, but this is the pose, this is a side tricep pose, yes. But side tricep is just the name of the pose. It's not just showing your tricep, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure he's not really flexing the triceps here. Here, however, he is doing that. I'm pretty sure the reason for this mirror selfie was that people were saying that he has no triceps. And now here, he actually flexed that tricep. And you can see, you can see some of the horse show. Not exactly the prettiest shape, I wouldn't say so. Not exactly the perfect looking horseshoe, but... It is there, he can show it when he wants to, when he flexes the tricep, he can show the horseshoe. Now, he doesn't have like the, the, the best outer head of the tricep, but uh, to say that he has no triceps, I mean, the guy is known for arms, basically. This is the most recent update of his arms. I don't know how much they measure, but they are freaking big. And it's not all biceps. I mean, you cannot really have big arms if you have no triceps. Uh, biceps definitely do help, I mean, they are a part of the arm, but like two-thirds are actually triceps, so he has huge arms, which means he does have massive freaking triceps. Again, not the prettiest horseshoe, not the prettiest outer head, but the rest is massive, he does have big triceps, big arms. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is also the thing that everybody is asking in the comments, why is he not doing more shows this year? He's already pretty much ready for the stage, why didn't he do Orlando Pro? Why doesn't he do more American shows? Why does he have to travel all the way back to Canada, and now he lives in Florida? Why does he have to go over there to Vancouver Pro? where he will have basically no competition. Is he scared of somebody? What is the reason? And here is what I think about it. So first of all, bodybuilders decide which show they're gonna do ahead of time. They don't just start prepping and then jump into the shows. No. The other thing is, he didn't win Vancouver Pro, and that's a Canadian show. He tried to win it, he failed. Back in 2019, uh, Hari Chupan won, Nathan Diasha was second, and Ian was third. And this year, he wants that title. Why is he not doing Tampa, for example? Because he already has Tampa title. Isn't it better to have a new title than two Tampa titles? You know, that's one thing. And also, did he know ahead of time that Vancouver Pro is going to be weak? 2019, it wasn't weak. We had Hari Chopin at arguably his absolute best ever. This time around, it's not really that good of a lineup, but did he know that? And even if he did, 
Why would he do a hard show to qualify for the Mr. Olympia? Why would he suffer more than he needs to? It's better to do an easier show without redlining his body, get an easier Olympia qualification and then be at his absolute best at the Mr. Olympia. And if he does well at the Mr. Olympia, who will care how he got there? Could have he won Orlando Pro this weekend against Hassan Mustafa? I think yes, I think he could. Could have he won Puerto Rico Pro, New York Pro, Indy Pro? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he would. Top 7 at the Mr. Olympia, a very close top 7. And that means something. That means Ian is a great bodybuilder. So I think he would have won many, many shows this year if he wanted to. But, guys, his physique is the kind of physique that suffers with more shows he does. He has trouble staying full. So more shows he does, he's gonna be worse at the Mr. Olympia. And at this point... I'm sure he cares more about the placement at the Mr. Olympia than he cares about winning multiple pro shows. Surely he would like to have more pro wins, more titles under his belt. For every pro win he has a tattoo on his fingers, so I'm sure he would like that, but if it's gonna cost him his placement at the Mr. Olympia, then I don't think it's worth it. I'm sure he calculated his uh, uh, chance and he decided, you know, he's not gonna do too many shows this year. Uh, he said he might do another pro show after Vancouver and it's gonna be taxes if he does another one, but I don't think he should. As a fan, sure, I would like to see him as often as possible, but... For his career, I think the best decision would be to do an easy Olympic qualification and then just go all out for the Mr. Olympia, come in fresh and do the best that he can. What do you guys think about this? Tell me in the comment section down below. Before we keep going, guys, I just want to tell you about Vintage Brawn. It is a protein powder by the old school labs, but it's not just a whey protein powder. It is whey isolate, it's actually beef isolate and also egg white protein. So it's three kinds of protein in one. It tastes amazing. And it's much closer to a complete meal than just a regular whey isolate. So if you guys want to support me and my channel, you can try this protein out. Uh, just use the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN for a 12% discount. Alright, so I mentioned Orlando Pro and Hassan Mustafa, who obviously won this show. It was a pretty easy and convincing victory. Andrea Presti was in second, Phil Klahar was in third, Max Charles was in fourth and fifth place was Tonio Burton. Hassan won pretty easily, I would say, and uh, he was he was conditioned, yes, he was in good condition, but not as sharp as he was at Puerto Rico Pro, but he was fuller, based on his coach AJ Sims, he was 6 pounds heavier, and you can see it, he was definitely bigger and rounder, but his glutes were a little bit softer, softer than the last time we saw them. So you guys go ahead and tell me which version do you prefer, this one a little bit fuller with still good conditioning or the previous one flatter with better conditioning. I prefer this one, Orlando Pro version, Puerto Rico he was a little bit too flat if you ask me, uh, maybe a little bit sharper, drier, but I think this fullness is worth losing a little bit of that crispiness. Because he was full, because he was filled up to the gills, as you can see, he spilled over a little bit, but where he didn't spill, he looked bigger, harder, rounder, I mean everywhere from the front. I would say even back, but his glutes, that are his weakness, I mean even when he was uh, completely dry and, 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 and flat at Puerto Rico, his glutes were still not as sharp as the rest of his body, if you guys remember, Tio was uh, sharper in that department, so that's, that's expected in a way. He spilled over in that area a little, but overall he looked great, he looked hard, full, round, and the comparisons are starting. Instagram pages like this one are comparing him to, for example, Hari Chopin, because they are similar height. When I saw this, I was like, come on, man, there is no way. I mean, look at this, look at the lads, look at the arms, look at the vacuum, look at the details in the quads. I mean, Hari is 10 times better, but then again... I started thinking, Hassan did so well this year, he finally brought the conditioning and he deserves to be compared against the very top. He will be compared actually in person at the Mr. Olympia, he got Olympia qualification uh, two times now, he has two pro show wins this year. So this is definitely his year, finally he got that conditioning right and it works, he's winning shows. Since we didn't have a proper video, I found this on Instagram, a comparison between him and the runner-up, Andrea Presti. So as you can see, Andrea was harder, he was even more conditioned, especially in those glutes I was talking about. But, you know, it's simply the roundness, the fullness, the, the, the size that Hassan has that got him this win. And he was decently conditioned. So even though Andrea Presti looks amazing, Hassan wins because of that fullness and roundness that he is known for. 
We'll see him at Mr. Olympia. I hope he's going to improve even more and he's going to come as conditioned, if not even more, but with more fullness and roundness and with better controlled abdomen. And I think if he does all that, he has a good chance to be like top 8, maybe. But top 10 would be a huge success for him. What do you think? Alright, the next story is Larry Wills potentially doing classic physique. <laughs> Larry posted this video of himself doing some bodybuilding posing. Anyways, uh, in this video, does he look like somebody who could do classic physique? Well, if the question is where he would fit better, in bodybuilding or in classic, I would say classic, because he's so tall, he's so big, he has such a huge frame, that if he really wanted to do bodybuilding, he would have to be like 350 pounds on stage or something like that. It would take forever for him to fill up this uh, huge frame of his, and I doubt he would ever do it, but can he really do classic? I don't think so either. In some of the poses he looks pretty decent, pretty, pretty aesthetic, like this one for example, in some others not so much, I mean could he like get to the Mr. Olympia stage? I don't think there is an absolute chance for that. Could he get a pro card? That's a possibility, sure. But realistically, I mean, let's speak realistically, uh, considering how much he is weighing, especially, you can throw all that out of the window. As you can see here, he is 272. I don't know when this video was taken, it could have been from his prep when he was preparing for a bodybuilding competition, and if he's weighing 272 right now, here he was, I don't know, like 4 or 5 weeks out of his show, he was probably weighing less, but you guys know that Larry is a huge guy. I'm pretty sure he goes over 300 pounds in the offseason, so can he really go down to classic physique? I mean, can he lose that much weight and fit in the weight gap? Uh, probably not. Probably not. I mean, maybe if he atrophied completely, if he was like jogging every day for three hours, uh, went completely off of everything, all the gear, and somehow made the weight, but the question is what he would look like if he did all that. He probably wouldn't look the way he looks here, and with this frame, he needs a lot of muscle to look good. Now, does he look bigger and better than Chris Bumstead here? No, even though he weighs way more than him. So, it's all about the shape. Also, Larry had many injuries. I mean, the guy is a powerlifter after all, and a strongman too, he is an arm wrestler, and so he tore his muscles many times, some of them healed properly, some of them didn't. Here you cannot even see anything, because it's probably an older video, but if he would get completely shredded, you would probably see all those uh, tears, all those injuries. And I mean, simply the shape. Now, again, he could win a pro card if he downsized that much, but that's probably about it. I mean, he does have a beautiful physique, he does have a small waist and pretty lines for a power lifter, but losing that much muscle just to fit the weight cap to maybe win a pro card, I don't think it's worth it, and I don't think he's gonna really do it. <laughs> Whatever you guys think about his potential in classic physique, tell me in the comment section down below. Next up, we have Hunter Labrada with a physique update at 286 freaking pounds. Pretty much, I can say, shredded. I mean, look at the vascularity, uh, look at the, 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 the lines in his delts. I mean, look at this guy, he's lean, he's shredded. He talked about this on his YouTube channel and he said the reason why he's so lean in the offseason is not because he's really careful about what he's eating, because he's doing cardio and this and that. No, it's simply because... He is not eating enough food, he cannot eat as much as he needs to, to grow even faster, to get even bigger. Because his metabolism is so crazy and he really doesn't have that much appetite. He usually drinks shakes, believe it or not, his main source of protein is whey powder. Also, he has uh, those chicken and rice uh, shakes, which is the worst meal that you can drink, actually. I tried a couple of times when I didn't have time. It's just, you know, chicken, rice, and some water, and you drink it. It's, it's horrible tasting, but he just doesn't like to eat that much, and he doesn't want to spend too much time eating and cooking. I, I get him. I mean, I'm a bodybuilder myself. I compete. I prepare myself like five, six meals a day, and it takes a lot of time. But, you know, he gets to do that. He has crazy genetics. He doesn't have to eat uh, whole meals. He can just drink protein shakes and progress, which is crazy. I don't think anybody could go away with this. I know people who do this, but it's usually guys with blessed metabolism, with blessed bodies, who just grow whatever they're doing, who would grow probably if they didn't even care about how much protein they get in, but he cares, so he gets it the easiest way possible by drinking shakes, and uh, he doesn't eat enough, he doesn't drink enough, so he stays really shredded. 
he's 286 pounds here, which is heavy, which is, you know, a lot. Like, Nick Walker is 292, something like that. So that's like 5 pounds uh, more than Hunter. But Hunter is leaner. Leaner and harder. And there is still a long time before the Mr. Olympia. Somebody asked him a question, how much will he weigh uh, at, the, at the Mr. Olympia. I don't know where this question was, but Bison Trice posted it. And he says that he predicts he's going to be between 258 and 262 pounds. And last year he was 256. So if his prediction uh, comes true and if it is on a high end, he is going to be 6 pounds heavier. And improved. You know, he said after the Mr. Olympia, he doesn't want to get big, just bigger everywhere overall. He needs to improve his back, he needs to improve certain details, but really try to maintain and actually get even smaller in the waist. And it looks like, based on this physique update, that his waist shrunk. It could be just the angle, it could be something else, but it looks like his waist is smaller than last year. And it looks small overall. I mean, Nick Walker in the offseason, his waist looks huge. And I'm comparing him to Nick because these guys were 4th and 5th at the Mr. Olympia last year. And that is a rivalry that might continue this year. Hunter made a post about rivalries. He talked about why rivalries of yesteryear, as he says, were better than the ones today. And he says it's because it was real. It was people who worked so hard and they were actual rivals. Today, it's often fabricated, like blessing a body boy Nick Walker. That's not a real rivalry. They are not that close. Nick Walker and Hunter are actually on that level, trying really hard, and they are close. This year, who's going to place where, who's going to place higher, who's going to beat who, it's going to be really interesting to see, it's going to be exciting, but Hunter is not playing any games, he's doing the hard work, as you can see, it's working, I mean, his waist has shrunk, it seems like it, and he's 286, guys, that, that's big, that's a lot of weight. So whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.